What's up, friends? It's me, your boy Moog, Max Mogan, reporting live for you, specifically you, from beautiful Alpine, Wyoming. This is Wake Up, Wyoming, for April 21st, Earth Day, or so they say, 2018. And it's a big show today because we just used our Wake Up News mailing list over there at MailChimp for the first time. Hopefully, it will help us build an audience uh, just sent out a mass email. Pretty excited about that. It's my first one ever. Uh, if you want to join the Wake Up News mailing list, just head over to the Wake Up News page on Facebook and hit that little sign up button that's in the right there. What's up, Denise Lynn Dillon? What's up, Joshua? What's up, Greg L. Cheney? What's up, Laura? Christine Wintrow, DeAndre Omar Smith. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Really appreciate it. We got a big show today. We're looking at the news of the world. Focusing on the serious situation, censorship of independent media, like here at Wake Up News. You know, it's so funny. We're on a page with a reach of 2.4 million on the week, largely due to the work of editor Zachary Coons, who's always busting his hump, trying to increase our reach. And this page has got 540,000 likes, 539,000 likes, yet it seems like we can't build a live stream audience of more than 100 people. So if you could help out by sharing this video, that would be great. Uh, if you, again, if you want to join our mailing list, hit that little sign up button in the top right corner of the Wake Up News page. And we're going to get into it. We're going to get into it today. As usual, again, if you want to join our mailing list, I'm going to try to get in the habit of sending out a mass email every time we go live. I just pasted the link to this sign-up page into the comments there. Let's get into it. First story of the day, good news on the home front. The wave is in, the lunch counter. People probably aren't going to like that. I'm sharing this, the other surfers at the lunch counter, but the lunch counter's in, so... Things are on the up and up. You know, one of my favorite things about surfing the lunch counter is that you get grounded back to Earth's natural frequency by bathing in the sacred waters of the majestic Snake River, the wild and scenic Snake River here just north of beautiful Alpine, Wyoming. Uh, you know, we live in such an electromagnetically polluted world, and I just love surfing that river. Can't stress it enough. Uh, this is a little footage of surfing from a uh, couple years ago, and it sure is fun. Anybody want to learn how to surf on the Snake River, hit me up because I will teach you. I got a couple extra boards. The water's a lot colder now than it was when this video was made, but I can teach you to surf, and it'll probably be a lot of fun uh, connecting with the audience down there, away from cell phones, away from the Internet, getting in touch with good old nature. Once again, the lunch counter on the up and up. We're over here at the USGS taking a look real briefly. Uh, you can see the forecast. It's coming on up, coming on up. So uh, right after the show today, I'm going surfing. I've been sitting in front of the computer researching all morning, and my brain is already fried. So apologies if I don't make too much sense. Uh, you know, sitting in front of the computer is an incredibly taxing thing, it seems. Uh, this is kind of a fun story, you know, more good news coming from Boeing Boeing, published on Friday, why Indonesia's Bajau people can stay submerged underwater longer than you or me. These uh, nomadic seafaring folks from Indonesia can stay underwater for 13 minutes, free diving to depths of up to 230 feet. And a recent study by a formal postdoctoral candidate from the University of Copenhagen Center for Geogenetics has discovered that on a genetic level, these people have adapted to be able to hold their breaths for 13 minutes, some of them 13 minutes at a time, uh, which is pretty mind boggling. Turns out they have larger spleens, which makes it easier to uh, free up oxygen in the body. Uh, so fascinating stuff there. On the topic of breathing, now the bad news. Coming from our dear friend Tower Durden over there at Zero Hedge, over 95% of the world's population breathes dangerously polluted air, according to a new report. Most of the world's population resides in regions where air quality contains life-threatening pollutants. 
An estimated 95% of people are breathing unhealthy air where ambient, outdoor, fine part particulate matter concentrations, specifically soot particles, surpass the World Health Organization's air quality guideline of 10 micrograms per cubic meter, a new report has discovered. Almost 60% of the world's population breathe unsafe air in areas where fine particulate matter exceeds a dangerous level of 35 micrograms per cubic meter. And the comprehensive study noticed most of the world's hazardous air and the heaviest societal burdens are hitting impoverished communities the hardest. Not surprising. Uh, so unfortunate to there. <sighs> Heartbreaking to see. Uh, it goes on and on. It's a good read from our dear friends over there at Zero Hedge who are always on point. Check it out. Uh, this is a picture I took just a couple days ago down in the desert. Let's see if this will load up. There it is. This is actually down in Ibex, Utah, but one of those days where the sky is just heartbreaking. You know, you, people wonder why 95% of the world's population is breathing polluted air. Well, some of the pollution is unintentional, right, from coal power plants, stuff like that. But it sure seems like they're spraying something in our atmosphere on the regs, as many of you already know. Moving on here, what else are we getting into? Okay, important issues. You know, I was gone. I was down in the desert climbing for a couple of weeks. Uh, this is a really disconcerting story out of the Miami Herald about an anti-GMO mosquito activist named Myla Demir, 45-year-old from Key West, Florida, who died in a hotel pool in Washington, D.C. under inexplicable circumstances when she was there to confront the EPA about genetically modified mosquitoes being released in the atmosphere or, you know, into the natural environment in Florida. I mean, what could go wrong, right? Uh, a couple of interesting things about this story. Believe it or not, last spring, about a year ago, a little more than a year ago, I actually stayed at the same hotel where this happened in Washington, D.C., when I was out for the march shortly after the eviction from Standing Lot Rock, uh, Jameson Dargan, the, the famous last man standing who uh, climbed up to the roof of the barn at Standing Rock, had caught, got a lot of support in the wake of Standing Rock, and somebody actually booked this hotel room for him, and I was able to stay there with him and Tim Schwartz and a few other people. We were all packed into this one room. But I specifically remember this hotel, the Cambria, in Washington, D.C., because I stayed there a year ago. And I can say in it, unequivocally that there are cameras in the swimming pool there because we actually got in trouble for swimming in the pool after hours. Um, so I don't want to make this story about me, but it's interesting because I, you know, the hotel where this happened, the pool where this happened, I've actually swam in that pool when I was in Washington, D.C. a little over a year ago. So it just seems strange. And again, there are indubitably cameras in that pool. Interesting to see how the Miami Herald reports this story. Again, this is old. This is a 10-day-old story. Um, but activist dies, 45-year-old. She was a strong swimmer. Uh, but, you know, this is kind of like a warning. It's, it's published like a warning to activists, like... You know, they don't do any research. They don't really look into the circumstances here. They're just like anti-GMO activist dies mysteriously um, in the headline. Our dear friend Derek Bro is a good buddy of mine who I actually met out of Standing Rock, covered this story and actually interviewed the traveling companion and fellow activist of Mila. And let's see what Derek was able to uh, uh Uncover, activist post spoke with Barbara Napoli, a fellow activist and long-term friend of Demir, who accompanied her on the trip to Washington, D.C., and one of the last people to see her alive. The two headed to Washington on Sunday, uh, you know, mid-April, and planned to deliver their petition on Tuesday morning. Around 8.45 a.m. Tuesday, Demir left Napoles to go for a quick swim at the hotel's rooftop pool before heading to the EPA. This was the last time Napoli saw Demir alive. Regarding the possibility of death by accident or drowning, Napoli said Myla Demir was not known to be a weak swimmer and had swum with whale sharks in the past. 
Napole said the two also had plans to go swim with dolphins in June. So it sounds like this woman is a pretty competent swimmer. And the pool at the Cambria is actually a pretty difficult place to drown because it's not a very deep pool, as I learned when I was staying there. Uh, this I remember sitting in this exact seat right here around the rooftop fire. Real nice place. Again, I wasn't paying to stay in this hotel. We had a bunch of Standing Rock water protectors packed in there. And here you can see a picture of the pool. Uh, you know, it's a pretty shallow pool. It doesn't have a diving board. I think the deepest section of this pool is four feet six inches deep, as you can clearly see in this image right here. So a pretty hard pool to drown in, if you ask me. Uh, this is taking me to booking.com. I didn't want to do that. But again, unequivocally, I can state that this hotel, this pool where she died, uh, there are most certainly cameras there. So if somebody wanted to do a little research into what actually happened here, uh, like the surveillance footage at places like all the hotels in Las Vegas when the horrible shooting happened there, the surveillance cameras at places like the Parkland High School, uh, the Cambria Hotel in Washington, D.C. definitely has cameras in the pool. So if, uh, you know, the mainstream media, the government really wanted to get to the bottom of what happened to this brave activist who died in the pool, uh, they could figure it out. Interestingly, a little Google search here, Google News. Sorry, it's all freezing up today. Hopefully we don't have too much glitching in the... Uh, the uh, broadcast here today, but looking at a Google News search for Myla Demir brings up, come on, there you go, brings up 1,240 results, right? We shared the top result there from the Miami Herald. And, you know, I was like, oh, you know, maybe I want to know if there's any footage of her death. So I searched drowning video footage, put that in there. And on Google News, you get one result. Okay, what if I just search for her drowning or results, right? Uh, so it's kind of funny how that works. You know, if you're searching for the video footage of her death, you literally get a result, one result on Google News that has absolutely nothing to do with her story. Um, so I just found that a little interesting. Uh, she was fighting against the GMO mosquitoes being released in Florida. And this is another month old story, a little more than a month old, but speaking of genetically modified or artificial intelligence insects, Walmart has filed for a patent for robotic bees, stranger than fiction. With the mass die-off of bees spilling trouble for agriculture, the world's largest retailer has filed patents for the use of unmanned vehicles or drones to aid in the pollination of crops. Um, yeah. So pretty self-explanatory, pretty shocking stuff. Kind of reads like an episode of Black Mirror, if you ask me. Here we can actually see the patent. And sure enough, it is been applied to by Walmart Stores Incorporated on March 8th, 2018. And there is the gist of it. So Walmart getting into the artificial crop pollinating game. Strange. You know, genetically modified foods, genetically modified mosquitoes, and artificial intelligence pollinators. What could go wrong with the food system? Um, you know, Myla Demir, a prime example of censorship. Same progressive. I've been wondering where she's been at, and uh, Tony Smith was too. He's asking, where the hell is Same progressive? It sounds like her live streaming has been pulled. She gets a much bigger audience than we do here at Wake Up News, and she's pretty on point, in my opinion, but it sounds like Facebook pulled her live streaming capabilities completely. Um, so that's a bummer to see. Um, yeah, prime example of censorship. You know, you can censor somebody by killing them, like what appears to have happened to Myla Demir, the Floridian anti-GMO mosquito activist. Same progressive, brilliant woman. Seems like her live streaming capabilities have been pulled too, or, you know, Hopefully that doesn't happen to us here at Wake Up News. Uh, speaking of censorship, uh, the moon of Alabama, where bar flies get together. Kind of an interesting heading for a website, but these guys are always on point when it comes to censorship. And this published uh, today, The Media War on Truthful Reporting and Legitimate Opinions. This is a great quote from George Orwell. 
the article starts off with. I'm going to read it to you. Early in life, I noticed that no event is ever correctly reported in a newspaper. But in Spain, for the first time, I saw newspaper reports which did not bear any relation to the facts, not even the relationship which is implied in an ordinary lie. I saw great battles reported where there had been no fighting and complete silence where hundreds of men had been killed. I saw troops who had fought bravely denounced as cowards and traitors and others who had never seen a shot fired hailed as the heroes of imaginary victories. And I saw newspapers in London retailing these lies and eager intellectuals building emotional superstructures over events that had never happened. I saw, in fact, history being written, not in terms of what happened, but of what ought to have happened according to various party lines. That's a quote from George Orwell, the author of Animal Farm in 1984, in his book, Looking Back at the Spanish War. Uh, the moon, then moon over ballot, moon over Moon of Alabama, excuse me, takes over. Last week saw an extreme intensifying of the warmongers' campaign against individuals who publicly hold and defend a different view than the powers that be want to promote. The campaign has a longer history, but recently turned personal. It now endangers the life and livelihood of real people. Can't stress that enough. Life, we saw that in the case of Mila. Apparently, uh, drowned in a four foot six inch deep pool in DC. Same progressive channel pulled, another example of censorship. And this article at Moon of Alabama, I'm gonna paste it in there, hot off the press from them because there are so many examples in here that I can't cover them all. There it is, paste it into the comments, do check it out if you feel like it or don't. Um, Henry gets it done, chiming in. Big Mac, what's good? How's the dog? Still no clean water for our neighbors in Flint, Michigan. Henry, thanks for tuning in. Dog's good. Uh, what's good out here? It's a beautiful day. Alpine, Wyoming, the waves in, and uh, we're exposing corruption, exposing modern censorship. Uh, this article goes on and on, really good read, showcasing how the mainstream media is demonizing anybody who questions their ludicrous narrative about the alleged chemical weapons attack in Syria that was used to justify bombing Syria, or more specifically, missiling Syria, right? Computer-guided missiles launched from ships hitting Syria. Sounds like 100 missiles were fired, and, and Syrian air defenses took down like 70-some of them, so not very effective use of taxpayers' dollars. Um, even if we did have a legitimate reason to bomb Syria, which we don't. I can't stress it enough, but an example of how the mainstream media demonizes anybody who questions their bullshit narrative. On April 14th, Murdoch's London Times took personal aim at the members of a group of British academics who assembled to scientifically investigate dubious claims against Syria. Their first investigation report, though, was about the Skipperl Skripal, excuse me, incident in Salisbury. The London Times also targeted Bartlett and Beeley. The piece was leading on page one, page one of the Times, with the headline, Apologists for Assad Working in Universities. A page two splash and an editorial complimented the full-fledged attack on the livelihood of the scientists. There you can see the front page headline. You know, anybody that opposes the march to war is ignored is uh, you know marginalized, is censored in various ways, or they just get demonized blatantly called apologists for Assad. Maybe you're just anti-war. Maybe you don't really have an opinion on Assad as a person. Uh, maybe you're not apologizing for Assad. Maybe you're just questioning whether or not these things actually happen. And it sure looks like they didn't. But this is a great, great, great read here. Another person who's been getting attacked is the beautiful and intelligent and outspoken Syria girl uh, who has been called a part or she calls herself partisan girl and the Guardian called her a Russian bot even though uh, she is not a bot. You can see quite clearly here that she's a beautiful young woman who's Syrian who tries to get out legitimate perspectives on what's going on in Syria and because of that, she is a 
attacked. Sad to see. Interesting to see, though. You know, I like to analyze the media. This video on Twitter has 249,000 views, which is pretty good, considering it was posted yesterday. And, uh, you know, thank God that Twitter is not censoring her perspective entirely. Excuse me, published two days ago. Interestingly, though, the same exact video that got 249,000 views over the course of the last 48 hours published on Twitter, over there at YouTube, where Syrian girl partisan uh, has got a big following. She's got 75,000 followers, 75,000 subscribers on YouTube. Yet over there at YouTube, that video only has 6,622 views, right? It's kind of funny to see the difference between a video uploaded to Twitter getting 250,000 views versus a video, you know, exactly identical video uploaded to YouTube on a channel with 75,000 subscribers only getting 6,600 views, uh, censorship in action. Let me close all those out. Uh, speaking of the Syria chemical weapons attack, you know, this is kind of, this is the kind of image compilation that just makes you say, hmm. Here you can see what clearly looks like a staged event. These are the infamous white helmets who are, you know, widely regarded as a credible source, even though they've been documented as being basically a Western supported terrorist organization in Syria. They are labeled and marketed in the Western media as this humanitarian group. But look, looks pretty staged. Looks like a uh, staged event. Looks like a set. They even have makeup mirrors in the background here, as you can see these lights uh, behind everybody. I mean, th this is like uh, the back room of a TV set here. It's utterly absurd. And you can see this guy standing there with what appear to be some mannequin arms. Uh, you know, good props for a little video. Uh, alleging that Bashar al-Assad completely irrationally attacked his own people with gas. So just, you know, interesting stuff added to the pile of ridiculousness in the world today. Uh, moving on here again, back to the Moon of Alabama article on the mainstream's attempts to demonize and censor folks who step out of line on the story used to bomb innocent civilians in Syria. The governments and media would like to handle the war on Syria like they handled the war in Spain that Orwell wrote about. They want reports without any relation to the facts. The media want to retail the lies and eager propagandists want to build emotional superstructures over events that never happened. The new communication networks, this is important. This, this actually applies to you and me both. All of us, all 87 of you watching, thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate all of you paying attention and giving a damn. I really do. The new communication networks allow everyone to follow the war on Syria as diligently as George Orwell took the war in Spain in which he took part. We no longer have to travel to see the differences of what really happens and what gets reported in the mainstream press. We can debunk false government claims with freely available knowledge. The government's media and their stenographers would love to go back to the old times when they were not plagued by reports and tweets from Eva, Vanessa, Ian, Maram, and Sarah, or by blog posts like this one. The vicious campaign against any dissenting report or opinion is a sorry attempt to go back in time and to again gain the monopoly on truth. It is on us to not let them succeed. Uh, so there you go. You know, I have to say, you know, recently what's been going on, Facebook under attack, right? Facebook under attack for sharing people's information. Of course, Facebook's got info on everybody. That's part of their business model. Uh, but so does Google. So does the NSA. So does the FBI. So does the CIA. So does Mossad Israeli intelligence. So does Russian intelligence. There are all these organizations, be they governmental or business or non-governmental, non-profit, NGOs, whatever you want to call them. There are all these organizations out there spying on us, stealing our information. But why are they going after Facebook in particular? 
my guess is because Facebook is, despite the algorithms, despite the censorship there that so many people document, it still really is, as far as I know. If anybody knows something better, let me know, please. You know, I've tried Steam and I've tried all these other social networks, but Facebook, yeah, I can only build an audience of maybe a hundred people on a really good day, but that's better than I can do on any other platform. And uh, so I want to thank Facebook. I know people don't really like Facebook too much, but I want to fake fit. I want to thank Facebook that they haven't shut us down entirely, that they do let us build an audience of 100 people. Because I know all y'all are good people, and I appreciate you all tuning in. And to me, it seems like the attack on Facebook is really an attack on free speech. And part of the reason they're putting Facebook in the crosshairs is because they want Facebook to crack down even harder on independent media. Uh yeah, this is sad. This is old. This is a week old. If you didn't follow this, a lawyer, famed gay rights and environmental lawyer in New York City, self-immolated to protest environmental degradation. 60-year-old David Buckle. Uh, and uh, heartbreaking to see. Uh, you know, this didn't, didn't get too much coverage, but good example of self-censorship. Good example of the utter frustration that people can feel when they actually care about things passionately, when they actually want to change things for the better on this planet. Um, and this is an extreme example of somebody out of utter frustration or desperation. Or, you know, I don't know what his internal mental state was at the time when he decided to self-immolate in New York City. But he left a handwritten note and he identified himself and apparently was fully aware his death would be particularly gruesome. I am David Buckle, and I just killed myself by fire as a protest suicide, read Buckle's note left. With a typed, sorry, letter, steps from a patch of black grass that had burned beneath his body. I apologize to you for the mess. In his letter, Buckle laid out why he killed himself, framing his suicide as a noble sacrifice and his decision to hasten his death with the gasoline as a metaphor for the damage fossil fuels and other contaminants are inflicting on the environment. Pollution ravages our planet, oozing inhabitability via air, soil, water, and weather, he wrote. Most humans on the planet now breathe air made unhealthy by fossil fuels, and many die early deaths as a result. My early death by fossil fuel reflects what we are doing to ourselves. Buckle's death as an environment activist followed his distinguished career as a lawyer who worked on behalf of lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender people. His involvement with several high-profile cases and his legal maneuvering in closely watched court cases helped make him widely known as an astute political strategist, a brilliant lawyer, and before long, a reading voice for gay rights. Uh, interesting aside there, my old boss, Michael C. Rupert, investigative journalist Michael C. Rupert, actually killed himself, shot himself, or, you know, he might have shot himself. I don't know. Uh, don't know exactly what happened to Mike, but... His suicide note, pretty similar to Buckles in the sense of utter desperation and utter frustration at the state of the environment, right? Arguably, as the Baffler, Jack Downey reporting on April 19th at the Baffler, comparing David Buckles' death to that of our own planet, a metaphor for the planet. Uh, interestingly, self-immolations, actually a lot more common than you would even believe, since 1998, over the course of the last 20 years, 162 Tibetans have died from self-immolation, uh, largely protesting against China's brutal occupation of Tibet. Uh, speaking of wacky weather, you know, this guy, David Buckle, you know, he was specifically pointed out fossil fuels, Let's not forget, though, you know, the environmentalist movement has largely been hijacked. We've all, the mainstream media lies about everything. They also lie about climate change. And uh, you don't believe me on that one. Here's a good, well, where can we, where can we find an article? 
You know, if you don't believe that, that climate change, there's more to the story than just CO2 and greenhouse gases and pollutions and particulates unintentionally emitted into the atmosphere. There is also intentional climate change going on. There is wide scale, massive weather modification going on. Weather warfare, geoengineering, so they say, which is always portrayed in the mainstream media as only a last ditch attempt to mitigate climate change due to CO2. Of course, the same governments and corporations that put power and profit over people and planet are gonna use these technologies for the sake of power and profit over people and planet. Case in point, China, this is an article from 2013, uh, openly acknowledging that they created 55 billion tons of artificial rain. Okay, now, coming from our friend Jim Lee over at Climate Viewer, you know, we just talked about the Tibetan self-immolation over the brutal occupation of China, 162 self-immolations there. Well, China is covering Tibet in thousands of cloud seeding generators. So says Jim Lee, reporting on April 10th, 2018, over at climateviewer.com. This is a video Jim put out, worth watching. Jim, thank you for all your work. Jim, a prime example of somebody who is continually censored, passionate environmentalist, passionate researcher, hell of a scientist, incredible graphic designer, web programmer, like really in a, in a good world, perfect world, a guy like Jim Lee would seriously be an asset to any organization that actually wanted to know what was really going on. But instead, Jim Lee just does his work and gets censored. Looks like my keyboard is on the fritz here. I'm trying out a new, uh, there we go, we're back. Uh, for more work from Jim and more info on the fascinating yet disturbing history of weather modification here on planet Earth, head on over to weathermodificationhistory.com, an incredible resource put together by Jim, the indomitable Jim Lee, and Dominique Marama, incredible graphic designer and researcher, Dominique de Marama. And go through here, you can see the timeline, and you can also see the newspaper gallery, the, the news vault. This is really a shocking resource. So you can see there's 800, 799 images here, all documenting the history of weather modification going back into the 18th century. Just goes on and on, you know, so-called reputable sources like Popular Science, the Sydney Morning Herald, all reporting on weather modification decades ago. Um, of course, in the world today, we're widely told that these technologies don't really work, but at the same time, people are using them. Governments are using them. Yeah. Um, speaking of supposedly reputable sources like popular science, popular mechanics, this is coming from popular mechanics. The government accidentally released documents on psychoelectric weapons. Now, this is kind of an interesting read because these documents, these pictures specifically, are not actually U.S. government documents, but the U.S. government released them to Muckrock, a news organization that specializes in filing Freedom of Information Act requests. And for some reason, in an FOIA request that had nothing to do with psychoelectric weapons, the government sent them this information, which I find kind of odd. Uh, but these documents are actually from a lawsuit filed in 1996. And uh, pretty disturbing, you know, to know that these technologies, that people were already concerned about the possibility of wireless electromagnetic technologies being used to affect people's mental, physical, and spiritual health uh, was already on the radar in 1996. In fact, it goes back quite a bit farther than that. Uh, one of the books I always cite on this show, The Body Electric by Robert O. Becker, MD, where the man who was a pioneering researcher in the field of electromedicine and the study of our bioelectric selves uh, rung the alarm, 1985, on the possibility of an era of tyranny without terror. Um, if you want to read that book, you know, I love this book because it really 
I mean, this guy pulls no punches. And Zachary Coons, our editor in chief, shared that you can download the whole book for free. I highly recommend you check out chapter 15, Maxwell's Silver Hammer, if you want to know more about this issue. Also, the fine folks at Activist Post have been covering it. And I feel like it's really important that we be aware of it in the era when most people have got a smartphone, right? Most people got a smartphone and they're so friggin' addicted to it, they can't even put the thing down while they're driving their cars, right? They're out to dinner with their family. They can't even put their smartphones down because they're so addicted to these little technologies. These things are addictive by design, okay? And regardless of what you may think you know, they can also be weaponized against people, as crazy as it sounds. But, yeah, I guess my advice to you is if you ever feel kind of out of it, kind of wacky, kind of like you're losing your mind or, you know, you're confused, stressed, my best advice to you would be, number one, ground yourself out. Go outside and walk around on some wet grass or take a shower. Take a long, hot shower or bath, assuming the water's clean enough to get you back to Earth's natural resonant frequencies. Don't sleep with your phone by your bed. Turn off your Wi-Fi when you're not using it, or better yet, don't use Wi-Fi at all. Hardwire your computer and do it like that. Try to limit your exposure to this stuff. All that good stuff. Mariah Tucker chiming in, turn your phone off and Wi-Fi. Right, I can't stress that enough, especially for activists. Because if we're targeted, you know, like Myla Demir, arguably murdered in the Cambria Hotel pool, four foot six inch deep pool in Washington, D.C., mysterious death, uh, people being censored, people being censored overtly or covertly through algorithms, people being attacked, you know, journalists and academics being attacked for stepping out of line with the story on Syria. Um, there is clearly the potential to target activists with wireless electromagnetic frequencies. Moving on, it's enough about that. Speaking of censorship, you know, this is censorship special. This is another great example of how censorship works. The best seller that's not for sale, how censorship works in 2018, coming from the Reddit books section. This topic is important to me, so here's an update on my personal struggle to buy a particular book. It's an old lesson that blacklisting and publicly banning books is counterproductive and often leads to stronger sales short, long term, right? Any banned book, you know, if, if it makes the news, it gets more publicity. Well, there's another way to make sure people can't get their hands on the book, and this is it. To quietly capture and kill a book, this method requires a fake publisher who acquires the rights and then simply refuses to sell the book. As far as I can tell, that is exactly what has happened to this German bestseller. What's the title of the book? Well, it's a German book, so it had a German title, but the English title is Journalists for Hire, How the CIA Buys the News. It was published in Germany in September 2014, and that same month, a new publisher popped up, popped up in Oakland, California, tieandlane.com, incorporated September 2nd, 2014. Uh, if you go to tieandlane.com, the website doesn't exist, right? The website is no longer active, okay? So it's basically a non-existent publisher. Uh, going back to the Reddit here. Tyan Lane promptly bought the U.S. rights to the book, How the CIA Buys the News, Journalists for Hire, and proceeded to not sell it to this day. I know this for a fact because I've tried to buy the book repeatedly since it was published on May 15th, 2017. I'm not the only one either. Other would-be buyers have reported the same experience. Um, it goes on and on here, and this, this Redditor does a really good job. But interestingly the author of this book died mysteriously too. Uh, the book was officially published on May 15th, 2017 in English, originally published in German in 2014, some four months though, but in 2017, four months after the author died, uh, sudden death at age 56 would only make this book seem more relevant. I sincerely hope his heart attack had nothing to do with his offices being raided by the secret police. It goes on and on. 
by just a prime example of another form of censorship. And perhaps this author was killed. I don't know. But I do know if you go over to Amazon.com and try to buy the book Journalists for Hire, How the CAA Buys the News by Dr. Udo Ulkotter. Rest in peace, Udo. Um, you cannot buy it because it is unavailable. So there you go. Speaking of Amazon.com, come on. Amazon gets tax breaks while its employees rely on food stamps. New data shows. This is coming from The Intercept. The Intercept, of course, not the most reliable source. Uh, they are kind of taking a mainstream stance on the war in Syria, for example. Later this year, but this is funny, this is a prime example of fascism, which Benito Mussolini defined as the merger of state and corporate power. Amazon.com double dipping on Snap. Later this year, Amazon will begin accepting grocery orders from customers using SNAP, the federal anti-poverty program formerly known as food stamps. As the nation's largest e-commerce grocer, Amazon stands to profit more than any other retailer when the $70 billion program goes online after an initial eight-state pilot. But this new revenue will effectively, effectively function as a double subsidy for the company. In Arizona, new data suggests that one in three of Amazon's own employees depend on SNAP to put food on the table. In Pennsylvania and Ohio, the figure appears to be around one in 10. Overall, of five states that responded to a public records request for a list of their top employers for SNAP applications, Amazon cracked the top 20 in four of those five states. Um, so Amazon.com, the world's largest retailer, I think, projected to handle 50% of all online sales in the U.S. by 2021, doesn't pay its employees enough to stay off the SNAP. And now they're going to be selling groceries through the Internet via SNAP or, you know, accepting SNAP for selling groceries. So they're basically, by not paying their, cut their employees enough, to stay off SNAP, they are going to be getting paid by SNAP for not paying their employees enough to stay off SNAP. Stranger than fiction, the world that we live in. Let's move on to the war in Syria, back to the war in Syria. This is a great little opinion piece from the South China Morning Post by Yodin Latou. As if Iraq wasn't bad enough, now they're lying about Syria to wage war. Yodin Latou says the U.S. and its allies have not only learned nothing about their disastrous invasion of Iraq, they're using the same kind of lies to justify the same mistakes they're making all over again, this time in Syria. Uh, so good read here. Uh, da, da, da. I mean, yeah, he covers it. Trump ordered the airstrikes, offering no proof whatsoever of gas-killing animal as Trump called him, Assad's culpability, when experts from the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons, OPCW, were already on their way to Syria to find out the truth. That's right, the U.S. bombed Syria before these experts showed up. We're still waiting for their verdict, but in the meantime, what veteran British war correspondent Robert Fisk hasn't covered so far is a stunning repudiation of the mainstream narrative. No shortage of repudiations of the mainstream lately. Fisk, an award-winning and highly respected journalist, who has covered Middle East product conflicts for four decades, has gathered witness testimony on the ground in Duma that raises doubts as to whether there was a chemical attack at all. Writing for The Independent, Fisk tracks down a doctor working at the same clinic who cheerfully tells me that the gas videotape, which horrified the world despite all the doubters, is perfectly genuine. But wait, there's more. The patients, he says, were overcome not by gas, but by oxygen starvation in the rubbish-filled tunnels and basements in which they lived. Why do they live in rubbish-filled tunnels and basements? Because we've been bombing the shit out of their country since 2011. On a night of wind and heavy shelling that stirred up a dust storm. Okay, Fish reporting suggests chaos, chaos deliberately created by so-called first responder, so-called activists from the group known as the White Helmets who panicked people into believing they were under a chemical attack and doused them with water from hoses when they rushed to the clinic for the benefit of the cameras. This is not the first time the White Helmets, known to work hand-in-glove with terrorist groups operating in Syria as anti-government rebels, 
have been accused of using unwitting civilians to act out dramas tailored to resonate with the West and provoke an attack on Assad. The decision to bomb Syria had not even been made when Trump jumped the gun and warned Assad and his Russian allies in a tweet of nice and new and smart missiles heading their way. Way to go, Uncle Sam. Way to blow people up. Waste tax dollars. All that. The Israelis doing that, too. Hearts go out to the Palestinians who've been oppressed for so long. You know, it's funny. They seems like every day, at least once a week in the Jackson Hole Daily, we get some article reminding us about the Holocaust. You know, the horrors inflicted on the Jews during World War II. Now, the Holocaust was horrible, but... You know, they always mention the 6 million Jews that died during World War II. Rarely do they mention the 40 million Russians that died in World War II. There's not too much sympathy for the Japanese that we bombed nuclearly at Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Not too much sympathy in the mainstream media for all the Germans who were killed in World War II, like the innocent civilians that were killed in the firebombing of Dresden. Yet, for some reason, the mainstream media continually reminds us of the horrors of the Holocaust while ignoring most of the other horrors of World War II or why that war was even fought. And uh, Israel was formed a long time ago, back in the 40s. The Palestinians oppressed ever since then. Uh, four killed, 156 wounded by Israeli fire in the fourth Friday of Gaza protest. So hearts go out to the Palestinians. A good example of what happens when people who only have slingshots and stones go up against a heavily armed, well-funded military like the IDF. Uh, so hearts go out to the Palestinians. Moving on. North Korea missile and nuclear test halt hailed. No big surprise there. You know, North Korea is not a threat. North Korea was never going to nuke the United States. They're a professional boogeyman country. Um, not a threat. But... I guess we can call this good news, the nuclear program in North Korea, apparently shut down. Moving along, what else we got? Ah, Puerto Rico. The situation in Puerto Rico just keeps getting weirder. We've been covering this since day one here at Wake Up Wyoming uh, when we talked about the hurricane, Hurricane Maria, you know, the power... It's still out in parts of Puerto Rico seven months after this hurricane. And this most recent blackout struck me as exceptionally odd because, you know, the official report, the official story, which makes literally no sense, the power went out across the entire island. There are three and a half million people there. But supposedly the power went out across the entire island of Puerto Rico because a backhoe or some other piece of heavy equipment took out a transmission line. Okay, if you believe that, you believe just about anything. You know, it's like, can you imagine an entire island with three and a half million people and there's one wire from one power plant that can shut down the entire electrical grid for the entire island? Sounds a little absurd to me. Um, interestingly, the legislation in Puerto Rico prohibits upgrading the grid. Um, but if you want my opinion on the Puerto Rico situation, it's a prime example of disaster capitalism. Of course, the people of Puerto Rico can't really rebuild their economy, get their lives back in order, get to work, uh, sustain themselves with regular paychecks when the electricity is so unreliable, right? Months without electricity is going to ruin people's lives there. It'll ruin their livelihoods, right? If you don't have electricity, how are you going to run a tourist and manufacturing economy like uh, Puerto Rico? But... Hearts go out to the Puerto Ricans, Las Boricuas. Hang in there, you all. And, uh, you know, we'll keep reporting on the situation there. Hopefully, they get the power back online in Puerto Rico. 100% real soon. But, like I said, it looks like a case of disaster capitalism. You know, Puerto Rico is a beautiful island. And the Donald Trumps of the world, the billionaire banksters, they want all that prime oceanfront real estate for themselves. They want to buy it up at a discount. They want that place to be their little tax haven. Puerto Rico, a great little tax haven for the billionaires of the world. And a real nice place, but in the billionaires' eyes, the problem with Puerto Rico is that it's full of Puerto Ricans. Speaking of 
governments, billionaires, the World Bank, a not governmental organization, a for-profit banking cartel, just like the International Monetary Fund, the Bank of International Settlements, the Federal Reserve, so on and so forth. Well, what's their official recommendation? They recommend fewer regulations protecting workers. The World Bank is proposing lower minimum wages and greater hiring and firing powers for employers as part of a wide-ranging deregulation of labor markets deemed necessary to prepare countries for the changing nature of work. A, a working draft of the bank's flagship World Development Report, WDR, which will urge policy action from governments when it comes out in the autumn, says in the autumn says less burdensome regulations are needed so that firms can hire workers at lower costs. The controversial recommendations, which are aimed mainly at developing countries, have alarmed groups representing labor, which say they have so far been frozen out of the bank's consultation process. Right. It's important to note when the World Bank makes a recommendation and a country owes billions or trillions of dollars to the World Bank, uh, the country basically has to go along with the so-called recommendation. So there you have a prime example. You know, you wonder why there's so much inequality in the world, why the rich keep getting richer, the poor keep getting screwed over. Well, part of it's because folks like the World Bank have put the entire world trillions, specifically $167 trillion in debt, and then they write policies, or they write policy recommendations, I should say, for the countries so deep in debt, effectively getting the governments by the short and curlies, and the governments no choice but to follow those recommendations that breed inequality. Kind of fun news from The Guardian. The big Bitcoin high suspect escaped from prison in Iceland, a minimum security prison. This would never happen in the U.S. He escaped by crawling out of an open window and fleed Iceland on the same plane the prime minister of Iceland was on. Uh, kind of fun. Uh, interesting story there, but not going to cover that one too much. You guys are probably getting tired of me. Uh, I don't know why I've got this story in here, but, you know, climate change... The rich need to make sure their houses aren't going to get aren't going to get buried, submerged in the ocean. So, Dubai in Dubai they're building floating mansions now for the low low price of twenty three million dollars. You can get yourself your own little floating island off Dubai where you can sit around and watch the world burn. So, oh, thought that was kind of fun. You know, it's funny, same thing here in Jackson Hole. It's like there is so much inequality. There are so many serious problems, like environmental problems, governmental problems, the endless wars, a media that lies perpetually, completely broken systems. Yet, here in Jackson Hole, where the billionaires come to play a few short weeks out of the year, what do they do with their money? Well, they build themselves like 15 to 20 to 30 million dollar mansions. It's like if that's, you've got millions of dollars or billions of dollars, the best thing you can think to do with your money is to build yourself a 30 million dollar house. You fucking disgust me. And it's as simple as that. Uh, crypto world, you know, crypto world back on the uptick. I'm not saying you should buy into crypto now. But if you know, if you want to play the crypto game, I mean, it's the best thing we got going right now to replace the global banking cartel. I don't know if it's going to pan out the way uh, Satoshi and the other founders of Bitcoin and similar cryptocurrencies want it to. It seems like the markets have been heavily manipulated, especially since about mid-December. But in recent weeks, the market capitalization has been climbing again. And the big, you know, basically across the board, we're seeing all these cryptos in the green, sometimes by up to as much as 30% daily. If you're going to play the cryptos, keep a close eye on it. But the key thing, you know, to see whether cryptocurrencies are being adopted or not is the total market capitalization. And you can see, looking at the last year, uh, the market cap really surged there. 
in late December, early January, peaking out at about 830 billion on January 7th. And then it dropped to almost a quarter of that. Now it's back on the rise. So cryptos, I don't know. I will say one other thing on the cryptos. It's kind of funny. You know, you can you see so much FUD, fear, uncertainty, and doubt in the mainstream media when it comes to the cryptocurrencies. But one cryptocurrency the mainstream loves to pimp, they love to push it, is Ripple, aka XRP. Why? Because Ripple is for the banks, by the banks, and so on and so forth. A good example from Forbes, published on the 20th. Friday. Bitcoin is the religion, but Ripple would pack a higher return. They're pimping Ripple. Another Forbes article here, pimping Ripple. Ripple surges 20% as cryptos rebound, published on the same day. And then Express in UK, Ripple price set to skyrocket. Cryptocurrency market analysts predict soaring values published today over at express.co.uk. Why does the mainstream pimp Ripple while demonizing other cryptocurrencies? Because Ripple is arguably not a real cryptocurrency. Uh, if you want to support my work, that would be great. Most of my support comes through Patreon.com. I've got 19 patrons right now, ponying up $357 a month. And, you know, I'd like to do this more, but I have to make a living. Like, I have to squeak by. So the more support I can get here, the more time and money and effort I can devote to Wake Up Wyoming, to writing, to improving our content and delivery here at Wake Up News. So, you know, even if you can only pony up a buck a month, that'd be great. That'd be friggin' awesome. So please think about it. Henry gets it done with a good comment here. Gold and silver are the only currency that holds its own, not backed by faith, like the Federal Reserve now, right? Or cryptocurrencies, largely backed by faith. Uh, you're right there. You know, if you're going to invest in anything, I'd say like, you know, yourself, your health, food, enough food for a couple months. That's good to have. Get yourself some precious metals just in case they're, you know, total friggin' chaos and the dollars worth nothing then if you want to dabble in cryptocurrencies go for it but uh important to take care of yourself first of course it's pretty hard to get ahead in the world today uh, for obvious reasons on that note we're getting into the scopes thank you all for tuning in let's see what's going on in the astrological world we always end the show kimberly walden reminding you send max some love that's right head on over to patreon.com forward slash max mogren and Send me some love, please. I pasted that one into the links. I'm also going to put it up on the screen. Uh, so if you want to, you can. Or you can go over to paypal.com and support my work over there, too. Boom. Paypal me forward slash Max Morgan. I'm going to paste that one in, too. Please like that comment if you would. And then maybe we get a little more support here at Wake Up Wyoming. But on to the scopes. Here we go. Uh, Greg L. Cheney wants a tarot reading. Yeah. Uh, all right, Greg, I'll do a tarot reading for you. How many cards do you want? About three. Again, I'm no astrologer. I'm no none of that. But I do like the scopes because it's a good time to hang out with all of you. Six cards for you here. One, two. I'm putting a lot of thought into this. Three, four, five, six. Get your reading. Here you go, Greg. I'm not going to keep this up. you got to read this on your own because it's a lot. How you feel about yourself? Temperance. What you want most right now? To be the emperor, Greg. Me too. Your fears? Wheel of fortune. What is going for you? The sun. What is going against you? The devil. Uh -huh, that's not good, but ain't that the truth in the world today? And the likely outcome is the hierophant. So help is at hand, Gregory. Hang in there. Uh, there's your tarot card reading. You're a wake up Wyoming. Um, Henry gets it done, says two dollars for horoscopes. That's a good idea. I should be charging y'all for scopes. Uh, no, I'm kidding. I ain't gonna charge anybody anything, but let's get into this. Zachary Coons looking for Virgo. What's up, Zach? Thanks for tuning in, being part of the show today. Always great when you're around to help us boost the audience. 
definitely notice your efforts. I think we basically doubled our audience today. Uh, I saw it peak out over 100 viewers, which is great, because lately we've been sitting around you know, 30 to 40. Virgo, four-star day. You might want to cocoon and make it a day of rest, Zachary. If you had 24 hours free to spend however you'd like, what would you do? That is the issue you face, and now is your time to follow through. Avoid a controlling person. Tonight, actions speak louder than words. Kimberly Walden, Kimberly, thank you so much for tuning in. Thanks for all your support. Thanks to everybody that likes and shares the show. Again, if you share this show, odds are no one's going to see that post. So it might be more effective to send a link in an email or a personal message on Facebook to people that you think might like the show. Uh, but, of course, I do appreciate you sharing it. The more shares we get, the better. Although it doesn't seem like the shares really build the audience too much. But please keep sharing. Please keep liking. Please keep commenting. Libra, four-star day for you, Kimberly. You are full of energy and excitement, especially after making plans and or hearing from a friend. Don't let a roommate or family member's demanding behavior get to you. Know how controlling this person can be. Tonight, the more, the merrier. And this week, Kimberly, use Monday and Tuesday for meetings with important people. You're an important person, Kimberly, so maybe just get in touch with yourself that day. Jerry Wallace, Salt Lake City Zone. Jerry Wallace, looking for the Scorps. Good to see you, Jer. Hopefully the smog ain't got you down at the moment. You're having a three-star day, brother. Hang in there. Pressure builds. Take a stand about an important matter that could affect your career. You usually take strong stands, but perhaps you might opt to be more laid back at the present moment. Recognize that someone close to you is on the warpath. That would be me, Jerry. And tonight in the limelight. This week, Jerry, you're a star Monday and Tuesday, no matter which way you turn. So there you go. Paul Jericho says he likes the scopes. Thank you, Paul. Simonos Kisilovas, thank you too. Trevor Andrew, chiming in. Cancer baby, please come and ask you, Trevor. Thanks for tuning in for all you do to spread awareness, light and love, and all that good stuff here on the interwebs. You're having a four-star day, Trevor. You suddenly might have an attack of the green-eyed monster. Everyone feels insecure sometimes, which can trigger jealousy. Ask yourself where you feel you don't meet the grade. Understand that you probably can change the situation. And tonight, invite others out to dinner. This week, Trevor, make calls and schedule meetings from Wednesday on. Yeah, jealousy, the mean thing. And April Boso, what's up, April? How you doing there? Good to see you. I'm a Taurus, too, which is why you and I are always button heads. Three-star day for us. Let's see what's going on. You might not want to reveal everything you know just yet. Uh, I do that every day that I do the show. By the evening, you'll gain a better understanding about a recent mix-up. You are likely to find that you are less tense about a certain matter. Walk away from a controlling situation. Tonight, dinner for two. This week, tap into your creativity and create the mood you want and need. So there we go. Taking that into consideration, Laura Christine Wintrow looking for Gemini. Coming at you five-star day, Laura. You could be in a situation that might seem impossible to explain. Your smile creates compassion and support, which others receive loud and clear. Do not allow yourself to be boxed into a corner by a loved one who has manipulative traits. And tonight, reach out to a close friend. This week, schedule meetings, return calls, and deal with interpersonal issues. The one and only Angie Eagle in the house today. Angie, it's always great to see you here as well. Like the rest of the audience, all of you, so lovely to have such an engaged and passionate community of concerned and lovely human beings interacting here on Wake Up Wyoming. Force our day. We already read this one, Green-Eyed Monster. You probably heard it already, so there it is. Greg L. Cheney says, whatever. Hans Schellenberg, truth seeker, truth seeker. Fix that typo. Well done. Henry gets it done again. Recommended two bucks for horoscopes. Yeah, pony up. Uh, man, I'm behind in the comments here. Let's see. Moving in, DeAndre Omar Smith, thank you for sharing. Laura Christine Winter says, I haven't been getting alerts. Any of you that aren't getting alerts, head over to facebook.com forward slash wakeupnews and click this little button. 
please click this little button that says sign up. It's in the top right corner there. Uh, this will get you to our list, our email list. And I'm going to try, you know, kind of one man wrecking crew sometimes out here. Zach's helping out big time with shares and stuff today. But if you want to join that mailing list, that would be huge uh, because Facebook, yeah, they're not going to notify us. And maybe we might lose our capability to live stream soon, just like what happened to Sane Progressive recently. So if you want to keep in touch, uh, join that list, please. Uh, Susan Hamilton, don't forget Taurus. I got that one already. De DeAndre Omar Smith looking for Pisces. Let's see how the Pisces are doing. Three-star day. Hang in there, DeAndre. You'll want some basic time. You'll want some time to recharge, catch up on sleep, and get down to the basics. If you have, if you have a friend you can relax with, schedule some time together in the afternoon. A loved one could become difficult at the last minute, and you might feel challenged. I know that feeling. Tonight, do what you must. This week, you will get past the sluggish feeling by late Tuesday. So hang in there through Tuesday at the very least. Uh, Greg Al Cheney says my tarot reading was accurate. Thank you. I know. Uh, it was kind of creepy. April Boso is throwing in all this mushy stuff. You know, it's never going to work between us, April. I live so far away, and I'm a free bird in the Leonard Skinnerian sense. Let's see. What else do we got here? Just a bunch more comments. A lot of love from April Boso. So thanks for those. Appreciate that. It does make me feel good, but I don't know. What else? Anybody want me to cover anything else? There's the scopes for the day. I should probably read Cancer or Leo. I'm not going to read any more scopes because nobody else wants them. DeAndre, thank you so much for that. I appreciate you tuning in. Gregory, always saw Nelson. Thank you, sir. Thank you all for tuning in today. Here at Wake Up News, at the end of the show here, I just kind of want to see how well the video's doing. It says we have 32 viewers, uh, but I want to see what we actually got. It's kind of funny, you know, compared to on the Live broadcast, or excuse me, on the Be Live page, it's telling me that I have 275 reactions. Be Live being a third party site there, 275 reactions, 200 comments. And on Facebook, it's telling me that there's only been 81 reactions. And uh, it's not really telling me how many comments, but it's just good to see that it is, in fact, going out live on the interwebs. So that's good. And on that note, I'm signing off for now. Thank you all for tuning in here at Wake Up Wyoming. Remember, stay awake, stay aware, stay active. Take care of yourself and the ones you love. Don't let the bastards get you down. We do, in fact, live in the era of weaponized information. And the mainstream media is specifically designed to fuck your whole shit up. It really and truly is. The mainstream media is designed to make you miserable, to fill you with doubt uncertainty, despair, distractions, all the rest of it. So don't let it get you down, but do what you can to stay informed and uh, please do what you can to, uh, you know, transcend it. I'm out for now. I'm going to go surfing. That's one thing I can do. Get away from it for a little while. Uh, go enjoy stepping away from all of the artificial electromagnetic frequencies that are affecting all of us. And uh, on that note, I'm out. One love. Peace.